on the vegan diet because it's nutritionally poor food, fair. You have to eat a lot of it then, right? To get all your macro and micronutrients. You're going to end up eating a lot of alkaline plants, which will lower your stomach acid, if only for the time being, before it can bounce back when you're once again fasting or there's no food in your stomach, right? So what you're doing on this vegan diet, you're likely lowering your stomach pH, which allows bacteria to proliferate because you're eating food that's likely infected with this bacteria, which, you know, if you don't have to eat so much of it because you're also eating meat, your acid, stomach acid levels remain more or less normal and they're able to deal with a little bit of bad bacteria. And if the stomach is too alkaline and not acidic enough, then it can trigger all sorts of problems in the digestive system. Now, one of the biggest issues when the stomach acid is too alkaline is that it isn't strong enough to kill off pathogens from entering your digestive system. So as a result, you can get gut dysbiosis, candida, SIBO, and other gut infections. Well, clearly, Goji Man saw my video. What's up, everybody? I hope you're all doing well. Look, I'm glad he's talking about this issue, but he still won't tell you what causes the problem. The vegan diet. Eating a ton of alkaline foods. Plants. Yes, some animal products are low acid as well, and maybe even slightly alkaline, I'm not sure. But because they are nutritionally dense, true superfoods, you only need a little of them to satiate, and your stomach acid isn't spent or lowered for prolonged periods digesting them. Vegans who eat, and to be fair, poop 15 times a day, vegans who eat highly alkaline foods in large amounts are constantly lowering their stomach acidity, causing these problems. Gut dysbiosis, candida, SIBO, other gut infections. The cliche ex-vegan story, the story of the vegan diet. Now, if your food sits in the stomach and causes indigestion, this is usually a sign that your stomach acid isn't strong enough. And if this is the case, then you can take betaine hydrochloride, which is derived from beets, which will then boost your stomach acid. Well, add that to the list of supplements needed to temporarily sustain the vegan diet. The natural human herbivore diet, of course. Now, if you have stomach acid issues, the undigested food leaving the stomach will then hit the small and large intestines where the gut bacteria will ferment the undigested food, causing lots of gas and bloating. There you have it. Another symptom of the vegan disease. I swear to God, if I hear another vegan say how excessive farting is good for us, I'm gonna... <laughs> yeah. And the other problem this creates is that you need sufficiently strong stomach acid, otherwise the pancreas won't produce and release pancreatic enzymes. Now, enzymes are essentially proteins that help you break down your food. So as you can see, if the stomach acid isn't acidic enough to start breaking down your food, and the acid isn't acidic enough to release your pancreatic enzymes to break down your fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, then you are really gonna start running into problems. So, if your stomach acid isn't low enough, not only will you not kill pathogens, but won't be able to digest your food properly and it will putrefy in your gut. But Dr. Gregor says only meat can putrefy in your stomach. Yeah, that's because he's a cook. Moreover, if your stomach acid is too low, your pancreas won't release digestive enzymes. In other words, if your stomach pH is too high, that will cause a digestive disaster of a chain reaction. You have to maintain a low enough pH to be a happy, healthy human, not vegan. So what is this pH level exactly? Next up with the stomach acid issues is the problem surrounding heartburn. So if the stomach acid is above three on the pH scale, it then causes the esophageal sphincter on the top of the stomach to remain open, which then allows acid into the esophagus and then causes the heartburn issues. Is when your hydrochloric acid has a pH above three, and then you can get undigested proteins and putrefaction, which causes a lot of gas. Clearly then, stomach acid level above pH of three is not natural for humans. When that happens, we effectively destroy our digestive capability. We become unable to get nutrition out of our food and our body sends us a strong signal that something is wrong. Acid reflux. 
So what is this natural healthy pH of the human stomach acid? Between 1 and 2. If eating a lot of plant food causes our stomach acid to weaken and destroys our digestive abilities, then maybe, just maybe, we're not meant to eat much plant food. Let's look at a chart of stomach acid levels of carnivores, omnivores, and herbivores in nature. Well, mostly anyway. Scavengers have the lowest pH values, all the way down to 1. Their food contains a lot of bacteria, thus they need to be able to neutralize much of it. Our natural stomach acid levels are exactly in that range, suggesting that we did as much carrion eating as we did hunting, evolutionarily speaking. High meat, anybody? Now, I know this chart has the beaver as an herbivore, but that's fucking bullshit. Muskrats and others are meat eaters, just not the beaver, right? A beaver that builds dams that trap fish. Yeah, okay. Then, there's the rabbit. That other herbivore. Has anyone ever experienced how sharp rabbit teeth are? Excellent for cutting meat. The betong or betong with the stomach pH of 2.8 is kind of like a rat. I have no doubt it's mostly herbivorous. Still, one day... There will be an article or a video showing it eating another rodent-like creature or a snake. Unless all the veganistic plant-based agriculture eradicates the betong first. It's a fucking rat, guys. It probably eats everything. But anyway, you see what's going on here. As we get to pH levels of 3 and above, all the true herbivores appear. But as we get to pH levels of 3 and above, our tummies begin to ache. We cannot digest our food because we're carnivores. Yes, I know. The cat and dog stomach acid pH values are listed as pretty high. But that's because domesticated cats and dogs don't eat their natural diet. And their stomachs are all fucked up eating all that corn and wheat-based kibble trash. And your vegan food scraps. My dogs eat rotten meat all the time. With zero issues. Their stomach pH has to be low. But the point is that you don't need a very low stomach pH to digest some meat. If it's fresh. That's why true herbivores like goats, cattle, deer or even horses do eat meat on occasion and are just fine. It's carnivorous animals like us who cannot eat a lot of plants. Why? Because our guts are not populated with the variety and amount of bacteria that herbivores do have. That's why they can introduce some foreign bacteria from the environment into their gut, as their rich gut flora will more easily restore and maintain a balance in the presence of this so-called bad bacteria. And obviously, the plant substances that are toxic to us are not nearly as toxic to them. Some, not at all. Go feed your dog some avocados. See how that goes. Yes, I know vegan ideologues like Vegan Gains run around yapping about how we don't have any evolutionary carnivorous adaptations. But that's pure nonsense. That kid, who is clearly suffering on his plant-based diet also states that our natural stomach pH is over 3. He knows nothing. He's a vegan. Anyway, clearly, albeit inadvertently, Goji admits that we are not herbivores. We are carnivores, who can also get some nutrition from limited plant sources, like all carnivores can. But... We cannot sustain the unnatural plant-based diet without supplements, digestive enzymes, stomach acid-lowering medications, and obviously, wannabe healthcare practitioners like Goji Man. So the wheels on the bus go round and round. Thanks for watching.